there's no doubt social media is great, except for one thing, the people who use their keyboards as weapons of hate. But if you think tech giants like Facebook and Twitter are doing all they can to silence the idiots of the internet, then you're in for a shock. As you'll see, not only do these companies welcome trolls, they benefit from more of them. It's as cynical as it gets, but bullies, it seems, are good for business. And if there's a buck to be made, well, who cares about the victims? Around the world, a silent and sinister threat is wreaking havoc. Living anywhere, but hiding in the shadows. Cowardly keyboard warriors and anonymous trolls. And now we can reveal why Facebook and Twitter let them run rampant. So if you're out there getting people angry, it is effectively good for business. It's good for business, a absolutely. There's a totally direct correlation between how much time I spent on the platform and how much money the platform makes. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Silicon Valley insiders who helped create these social media mega businesses are now turning whistleblowers on an industry that's out of control. Do you now have some regrets in helping make this monster? I do. There's a real dark side to Twitter that we didn't fully realize. It's a dark side that cripples lives and livelihoods, with victims sharing for the first time the devastating impact of trolling. It's been hurtful to myself, it's been hurtful to others, it's been hurtful to people close to me. As those who've been attacked fight back, demanding cyber bullies be unmasked and put in jail. You're not big, you're not tough. You're scum of the earth. You genuinely want people locked up? Absolutely I do. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you. Anthony Siebold knew being an NRL coach was a lonely gig and that he'd need a thick skin. It comes with the territory. But while he always expected abuse from the stands, he never thought the most vicious attacks on him would come from a crowd he couldn't see. Online trolls mounting a relentless campaign to destroy his reputation. It's been pretty tough, um, particularly the last couple of months. In some ways, it's like the Wild West out there. You know, my situation went viral on social media. Um, you know, defamatory comments. Um, you know, my reputation was ru ruined in a lot of respects. He's the hottest young coach in the NRL. In 2018, Seabold was hot property in the NRL, having been named Coach of the Year at the South Sydney Rabbitohs. At the end of the season, though, he was controversially poached by powerhouse club the Brisbane Broncos. But some were left bitter by his appointment. Then, earlier this year, numerous social media accounts began spreading false rumours about Seabold's private life, suggesting it was about to cost him his job. The main claim was that he'd been having affairs with a number of his players' partners and that he'd been taking cocaine. Other messages suggested his wife had left him and one of his daughters had been self-harming. Do you remember the moment that you actually read them for the first time? Yeah, the very last message on social media was the one that probably upset me the most because it spoke about my daughter. It starts to really bring it home. Yeah, it does, yeah. Was that the hardest part for you, the, the impact that this was having on your family? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Not, not just, um, you know, like my mum and dad as well, you know. It's hard for, you know, everyone to see that, those messages. Some people watching this might think, where well, there's smoke, there's fire. Was there any truth to those rumours? No, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. I, I don't know what the motivation is. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Um, but... They obviously want to hurt myself and, and the others who were named in some 
um, way, shape or form. The messages were initially spread on Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, before being amplified further on Twitter. But as the father of three discovered, getting those platforms to stop the spread was pretty much impossible. It was vicious, wasn't it? Yeah, it's vicious. It's, it's, it's disgusting. As I said, um, you know, there's no accountability that I can see in and around the social media platforms. After weeks of people speculating about his personal life and his coaching position, Seabold eventually decided he needed to step away from the spotlight. Well, I think the final straw was um, hopping back on a plane from Sydney when I wanted to be with my daughter. He quit the Broncos. Yeah, it was really emotional morning. Um, you know, I'm not afraid of saying I cried in front of players because I care about them a lot. Still but as he finished up at his job, Seabold had unfinished business elsewhere. He wanted to get to the bottom of who had been behind the vile social media rumours that had been spreading about him. But with laws as they stand at the moment, there was little police could do. So he took the extraordinary step of hiring his own cybercrime investigators to dig for answers. A very interesting thing happened when it became public that you were now launching your own investigation into who was behind these messages. Some of these people just disappeared. Yeah, they did. 80% of the messages that, that were on social media platforms came down straight away, so it obviously put um, a bit of a scare across a lot of the people who were sharing. What, what does that tell you about those people? Well, pretty weak. Do you now know who the trolls were behind the campaign against you? Yeah, I've got uh, quite a few names. Yeah, I'd like to see some, some people made accountable, that's for sure. Coming up, there's someone within the game peddling these rumours around, closing in on the culprits. The time to ignore trolls is over. The time to prosecute trolls is here. And revealing the tech giant's dirty tricks. They push right up to the point of inciting violence. Victims fighting back. The trolls then call you a snowflake and say, harden up, princess. So sick of this victim shaming bullshit. That's next on 60 Minutes. Anthony Seabold's life is a lot less stressful now that he's moved back to Sydney following a tumultuous time coaching the Brisbane Broncos, which ended in a storm surrounding a vicious online trolling campaign targeting him. The veteran coach is used to hits on the field, but never foresaw the hits that would come off it. Went through some pretty dark times there a few weeks back because um the amount of hate, the amount of defamatory comments um, that was spread, and, and people were happy to spread. It was it was crazy, really, and that's not the Australia that I grew up in, you know. But this is Australia in 2020, where thousands of people are bullied online with almost no consequences for the cowards behind it all. However, Anthony Seabold is one of the few that are lucky enough to have the finances to seek justice for themselves. He's now taken the extraordinary step of hiring foreign cyber investigators to get to the bottom of who spread the damaging and untrue rumours, claiming his personal life was crippled by affairs and drug taking. After plenty of digging, the cyber sleuths have managed to unmask a number of culprits. This has helped identify, I mean, there's someone within the game that has been peddling these rumours around. Yeah, well, there's someone who, who makes a living from our game who um, is part of this conversation, who's added to the rumours, who's then um, forwarded on, um, you know, through, through messages on social media platforms. The person named in the report is an employee of New South Wales Rugby League. Got some very high profile. Uh, friends from within our game. Seabold you know, has handed the damning findings to police in both New South Wales and Queensland, as well as the NRL's integrity unit. But at this stage, no one has faced any consequences for spreading such vicious lies. 
It's ironic, isn't it? I mean, yeah. th these people are, have had a free-for-all calling mm. you whatever they want online with no repercussions, yet if you named them, you'd be the one that, 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 that cops a punishment. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's that's what's so ironic about um, all of this. You know, I can't sit here and tell you these names because, you know, essentially, um, you know, 60 Minutes could um, be, be, be charged. It's, yeah, it's uh, crazy. This is not about celebrities, this is not about politicians, this is about every single Australian because this impacts every single Australian. The time to ignore trolls is over, the time to prosecute trolls is here. In five, four, three. A very good morning to you, welcome to the Sunday Footy Show. We when it comes to online trolling, few people cop as much as females working in the media. And being a woman in the male-dominated world of sport has made Channel 9 host Erin Molan even more of a target. Now, you go to any of the rugby league sites online and believe you me, I don't go to them anymore, <laughs> but every single one was either that I was a woman, that I was ugly, that I looked like a slut, that I'd never played the game, that I belong in the kitchen, different footballers that I've had dalliances with about bosses at Channel 9 that I must have slept with. It's just vile. The trolls would call you a snowflake and say, harden up, princess. Of course they would. I don't care what trolls think. I am absolutely not a snowflake. Anthony Seabold's not a snowflake. The other tens of thousands of Australians who are abused online are not snowflakes. I'm so sick of this victim-shaming bullshit. There is a shitload of stuff that I will accept. There are certain things I won't accept. That doesn't make me a snowflake. Erin has joined Anthony Seabold in drawing a line in the sand when it comes to the scourge of cyberbullying. Trent Robinson has hit back at Rooster's critics. She'd put up with online abuse for years. But one troll went way too far when Erin was pregnant with her daughter. With sickening threats of violence, and even worse, this. I wish you a f***ing stillborn and you die in the process. Hip, hip, hooray. When you open a message saying, I want your unborn child to die, what does that do to you at, at that moment? It just really hurts you really, really hurts you and you, you go to some pretty dark places. I have an older sister who had a stillbirth, carried a, a beautiful little girl to full term, Emily, and to watch her bury her child and stand up with a little coffin and, and say, mummy loves you and she's so sorry to sit there and watch my sister go through that meant that my pregnancy was was fairly anxious throughout. So to start to receive messages of that nature um, really impacted me. The constant attacks took such a toll that Erin was beside herself with fear and one night it came to a head. We were lying in bed and we were asleep. It was like 1 or 2 a.m. and it sounded like someone had, like a window had smashed or someone had... It was just a massive big smash. And I thought, you know, that he'd come in and he was going to try and do what he was saying he was going to do to my baby. And that was kind of the moment where I thought, I can't do this anymore. So I went to the police and, look, they were amazing, but it's not easy for the police to, to prosecute and to take action because initially there weren't enough messages and more and more kept coming. And so there's a quota of how it, many times someone has to wish that your unborn baby dies before yeah, police select? yeah. So, you know, and this is, this is my point in that one message of that nature should be enough. The man behind the campaign targeting Erin, himself father of young girls, continued the harassment until police managed to track him down and arrest him, becoming a rare case where a troll is convicted, albeit only receiving a suspended sentence. But while police did eventually act, Erin claims Facebook still didn't want to know about this disgusting behaviour on its own platform. They say that they're doing their best to try and curb this kind of behaviour. Do you buy that? No, 
Not on any level. Not on any level. I reported these messages to Facebook. Did you get a response? Yes, and the response was that they were not considered offensive. I don't report anymore because it's a waste of space. It is a waste of time. They're not doing their best. Not even close. Few people know the inner workings of Facebook like Tim Kendall. The social media executive was once responsible for monetizing Facebook, helping make it the $700 billion business it is today. I regret my role. Um, I was part of the team and, and led the team that said, look, we're going we're gonna to go with advertising as, as the business model. And I, I believe that's what set us, set them on this, on this path. Tim was once friends with Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, but these days believes there's nothing friendly about what Facebook is doing to society. Now, Tim is breaking ranks to lift the lid on why organisations like Facebook don't crack down on cyberbullying and trolls. That behaviour actually drives engagement time online, which leads to more revenue from advertisers. So social media platforms don't necessarily want hate out there, but what they do want is for any emotion to be uh, surging within their users, and that's good for business. It's good for business, a absolutely. They're spending more time in an emotionally engaged state, and they're more prone to come back tomorrow and probably come back tomorrow for longer. And there's a totally direct correlation between how much time I spent, spend on the platform and how much money the platform makes. So is that a driver, basically, if you can get people angrier, they're going to stick around longer and that equals dollars? It is, it is. Because the business model is actually to push the margin on that as much as I possibly can. And that's what they do. They, put up, they push right up to the point of inciting violence and that's when they'll take it down. But hate speech is totally fine. Coming up. There's a real dark side to Twitter. It's been weaponized. No more excuses. Free speech argument is used too much as a crutch. The demands for urgent. It's making us sick. And drastic action. You genuinely want people locked up. Absolutely. That's next on 60 Minutes. Politics is an industry as brutal as any, and few know that better than Warren Mundine, the one-time ALP president turned Liberal Party candidate. His thick skin was forged by the fires of political brawls, but even a stalwart like him is still shocked at how vicious the world of social media can be. In the old days, they talked about these lynch mobs that came after people with pitchforks. It, it feels almost like the, the modern incarnation of that, doesn't it? Well, it, it is. They actually try and destroy your life and try and destroy you personally. Warren says he doesn't know why he's become such a loathed target online. But the attacks on him have been relentless for years. Captain Cook coconut <laughs> Warp f***ing idiot. What a f Uncle Tom. Now the Indigenous leader is revealing how this constant online abuse made him consider taking his own life. Just this build-up of stuff. You know, like, I, I was home that night and I was, you know, I've been pretty rough for a, few, for a while and I was just sitting at the table just scrolling through uh, some of the media stuff I get, and they just and you just go through all, all this, uh, you know, this dreadful, racist, uh, bigoted, uh, uh, sexual attacks and innuendos and that, and uh, and then I just sort of just got up and just sort of said I'm just sick of this and just walked out and yeah. How much do you think you're targeted just because of your race? Uh, there's a lot of it actually. It's it's really. F Bizarre. I, I was born in the 1950s. I grew up the first 13 years of my life under the Protection Act uh, and uh, in a segregated society. Uh, I can tell you now, I look back at that as a romantic society compared 
to the vitriol and the disgrace that is poured on me on, on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere, yeah, any social media. The toxic dangers of social media are exposed in the new Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. I always felt like fundamentally it was a force for good. It features Twitter's former senior vice president of engineering, Alex Rota. I don't know if I feel that way anymore. Who's revealed to us how, like Facebook, Twitter has turned a blind eye to trolling and hate speech. There's a real dark side to Twitter that we didn't fully realize, and I think as time goes on, it's becoming more and more obvious. And uh, it's not a place that actively polices hate and spam and abuse, and it's been weaponized. Do you think that hate speech is often protected by this idea that it's just free speech? I think that's exactly the argument that's used to protect it. The free speech argument is used too much as a crutch to allow a ton of behavior that is not good for society. Alex believes one of the most dangerous factors Twitter ignores is the prevalence of anonymous accounts, which are rife when it comes to trolling innocent users. Can anonymity be dangerous? So yes, I think anonymity does not bring out the best in people. And I think that people, when they're hidden behind anonymity and no, no consequences, the worst aspects of trolling comes out. And the more you can tie your behavior online to a real human being, you act in a way that more approximates how you treat strangers in real life, which is with decency and respect. Former Facebook executive Tim Kendall is so disturbed by the downsides of social media these days that he's now developed his own app, Moment, to help people step away from the online world. Do you think we've reached a bit of a turning point in society? I mean, it feels like for a decade, the push has been for everyone to get on social media. And now we've reached this moment in time where everyone's saying, no, actually, we need to cut back. I, I do. I do. And, and uh, you know, I've done a lot of looking into the arc of cigarettes and the arc of public perception with, with cigarettes. I, I believe that we are going to wake up over the course of the next 5, 10, 15 years and, and learn that overuse of social media is just incredibly corrosive to our own mental well-being and corrosive to society. You know, in a word, it's making us sick the more we use it. Facebook and Twitter refuse to be interviewed for this story, which probably isn't surprising given so many users are already accustomed to them passing the buck on the issue of online abuse. But if they won't police their own turf, then the onus is on the federal government to step in and there are now growing calls for them to toughen the laws surrounding social media use. Yeah, I'd like to see it stop with me. I would hate someone else to go through what I've been through. Great to be back in Sydney. It's good to have the family back together again. Anthony Seabold knows firsthand the carnage trolls can cause, having been the target of a relentless campaign to undermine him earlier this year. You get uh, your daughter's graduation today. Yeah, uh, it's going to be... Um, it's a little bit surreal, actually, how quick that's gone. They're really proud of her. But the father of three's newfound calm hasn't dented his desire to fight for change and accountability online. I'd imagine part of the drive for that is that making this a, a safer world for your daughters. Yeah, definitely. From a really negative situation, a really hurtful situation, if um, you know, going forward there is some legislation change, then I think that's a you know, fantastic um, you know, legacy to, to leave. And Anthony's definitely not alone in this fight. Oh, ballet! You'd never want Eliza to go through what you've suffered in recent years. No, I wouldn't want anyone to, to be honest. Uh, and that's a big part of, I guess, the motivation to do this. Not, not just for my little girl, but, you know, there's millions of, of little Australians who will grow into bigger Australians and who should never be exposed to the kind of things that a lot of people have been exposed to. 
TV host Erin Molan has been targeted by trolls for years, but now is a leading voice for change, even meeting with the Prime Minister recently to push for tougher laws on cyberbullying. She believes anonymity must no longer be an option and offenders should be facing jail time. You genuinely want people locked up? Absolutely I do. You need to change the entire conversation, the entire narrative and say, hey, Johnny, if you're going to troll, do you care about going to jail for three years? Do you care about being on the front page of the paper and your wife and your boss seeing? Do you care about you being held to account and never getting another job? Do you care about your kids seeing this in five years' time that their dad was an asshole and bullied someone to the point where they nearly took their own lives? Do you care about that, Johnny? Yes, you do. Because then Johnny sees real consequences for his actions. Then Johnny thinks twice about sending something. Then Johnny stops. It's not just Johnny that stops. Johnny's mates. And everyone else stops as well because they go, ooh. And, and that's the most powerful thing. You, you prosecute five of these people, five, and the majority of the rest will stop. If this story has raised issues and you need to speak with someone, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.